Welcome back to Philosophy 412. This is Dr. Katherine Abernathy, and today we are talking about Augustine. Um, Augustine, or St. Augustine of Hippo, was born in 354 AD, after Christ was born. Um, he, uh, Augustine was born in North Africa. His father was a pagan. His mother, Monica, was a Christian, and for many years, Augustine was searching. Um, Augustine's parents wanted him to be successful in business or in law. Basically, they wanted him to go into uh, a, a field of work where he would be good at rhetoric. So he started school uh, and studied rhetoric and languages. In 383 in Rome, he actually founded his own school of rhetoric. And then under the influence of St. Ambrose, who was a priest, as well as Augustine's mother, uh, who prayed consistently for his conversion, Augustine was baptized in 387. In 391, he became a priest and went to North Africa, um, where, well, actually he became a priest in North Africa. Um, and throughout his later life, he wrote many works of history, philosophy, theology. He wrote many letters, he, and he wrote sermons, of course. Um, and what we are reading today um, are a few excerpts from his Enchiridion. Let's start then with this work that we're looking at today, in which he talks about what is evil. And he says, evil is an absence. Evil is the absence of good. He, he actually says that good must be present in order for evil to be there. The evil is the decay from the good or where some of the good is lost. Insofar as a thing or a person exists, it is good. So people are ultimately good, according to Augustine, in that they are created by God who created them to be good. And since they still exist as God's creation, they are good. The evil is the absence of that good, the falling off from what they should be. It is the absence of good deeds, the absence of purity of soul, or he also describes, as, describes it as an infection of the body. If you look at this piece of Swiss cheese here, you could say that the holes in the Swiss cheese are the evil because the Swiss cheese is not where the holes are. You could also think about if you like chocolate chip cookies, it would be the, the evil would be the bite out of the chocolate chip cookie, the absence of the chocolate chip cookie where you would love for it to be so that you could eat the whole thing. It is also, he says, not a substantive, substantive presence. Augustine says that if a person is cured, the illness, illness does not leave and travel to another person. I mean, one might catch the illness, but it's not that if I am cured of a cold, then that cold has to be transferred to someone else. Um, so it is, it is not as though um, if um, I am healed of a wound, then someone else gets that wound. The evil does not travel around like that. So ultimately then, evil has its source not in God, who is supremely good and unchangeably good, um, but evil has its source in humans and angels. God is supremely and unchangeably good. There can be no evil or bad in him. Humans and angels, though, can change and can be corrupted. So God made the humans and angels to be good, and he also made them not to be unchangeable, so they can choose something that is not good. So when they choose a lesser good, say than God's will or God's plan for them, that absence of the goodness of the choice is what is evil. Augustine then goes on to talk about how we come to make errors. Errors in morals and errors in truth harm the soul. All errors in morals and in truth harm the soul. But these are not the only kind of errors that people make. For instance, he talks about taking a wrong turn, maybe going to work or going on a journey. So we intend to take one way to work or one path on a journey. And he says, well, we take the wrong turn, that's an error, but it might actually have a good effect. We avoid a wreck, we avoid being in a bad accident, uh, something like that. We avoid maybe running into a bad storm. Well, that doesn't hurt us. 
but he says errors in truth and morals are always going to injure the person who does who does the mistake who makes the error in truth or morals so we should always try to avoid error regarding truth and morals because those do harm the soul all errors of this kind are evils and should be avoided and this reflects to some extent what Cicero said who wrote before the time of Christ um, and said that to do moral evil harms the doer similarly Augustine says these sins harm the sinner more than the one sinned against so he he makes this conclusion then uh, that to do something that is morally wrong or to deny the truth always will cause um, an evil to the doer further in conclusion in section 23 uh, we can see it's in our book it's at, page, at the top of page 221 the only cause of any good is God and the only cause of evil is the falling away from goodness um, falling away from the unchangeable good of a being who is made good but is changeable so all things that are good come from God and what is evil is the result of a good being who changes and changes in a way that falls off from the good so now let us reflect on the characters in crime and punishment Raskolnikov argues that he has the right to kill the pawnbroker and he winds up killing her sister as a necessity to avoid being caught. What would Augustine say about this? What did the two murders do to Raskolnikov? Do you see how his actions affect his soul? Recall how Cicero argued that immoral actions result in a punishment, not meaning jail time, or some other penalty imposed by a court, but the harm to the soul. How is Raskolnikov's soul harmed? Think about his delirium, his nightmares, and his illness. This would also seem to reflect what Augustine says about how sins harm the sinner more than the one sinned against. For instance, the pawnbroker, uh, the moneylender, has set aside her money to be given to a monastery after she dies. So she has planned for um, good to be done with her possessions after she dies. She seems to be a woman of faith. On the other hand, Raskolnikov seems to be in jeopardy. His soul seems to be in jeopardy as he has done this evil thing in murdering uh, the pawnbroker and her sister. Reflect as you read on what is the punishment that Raskolnikov receives.